wait to get to get to oh wow that was a run on that did not make any sense i had a wonderful time this last fall <laughs> when I went to Round Top and spent a week there in an Airbnb with Tammy and Dave from Vintage Uprising Texas as well as Dee from Thrill of the Thrift and Vinny from Vintage Vinny's Antiques. That's right we were all under one roof and it was marvelous. Um, joining in on the fun on some of those days was Katie from Vintage and Vinyl here from Florida and a Christy from Tempe Weeks Vintage, who is also one of the Texas gals and lives in the Houston area with Tammy and I, as well as Beth. Beth showed up too. Didn't come to the house, but we got to hang out with her at Round Top. Now, shamefully, my totes of things that I bought at Round Top have for the most part sat untouched in my studio. Now, I didn't buy a bunch of things for reselling because I wasn't reselling last fall. I did buy a bunch of things for myself because I am still a hoarder, I'm, <clears throat> excuse me, a collector, especially a collector of fabric. So I'm looking in this tote and what you're going to see in this fairly quick little haul video, because we're gonna, what we're going to do is we're going to do one tote at a time for each haul. So what you're going to see in this, in this little haul video in this tote are mostly fabric so if you don't like fabric you know skim through and see if you see something you like and if you don't i appreciate your stopping by please go ahead and hit that like button just because you you like me <laughs> and maybe i'll have something different on the the next go round. although i have to tell you a lot of the stuff i got at round top was fabric because we went to round top we went to a bunch of other little towns around it and i am a fabric sucker so about fabric. So if you need some fabric for something, a specific type of fabric, pattern, color, whatever, and you can't find exactly what you need, let me know. I probably have it. And if I don't, Tammy does. And you know, one of us may be convinced to part with some of it for you. <laughs> as long as you don't need like all of it. We gotta keep some of it, you know, like for a scrapbook or something. I don't know. Fabric's fun. So anyway, without further ado, let's get started. And you know what? I will try to show you the non-fabric things first. So then if you don't care for fabric, you are free to leave. And you won't have missed the things that you do like. Um, as I said, most of the things that I bought were for me or will be for me for the most part or whatever. So anyway, this one, um, I believe my husband picked up because he likes beer. <laughs> he likes beer, he cannot lie. He always needs a mug. And it was a dollar, a dollar glass mug for your deep freeze, for your freezer, so that you have a nice cold beer at the end of the day. In fact, judging by the time it is, he's probably sitting in there enjoying a nice cold beer already. And as soon as I get through, I'm going to go in, in there and enjoy a shot or two of rum or a couple of glasses of wine. Why not? Why not? <laughs> oh, these are something that I guess you would call it a collection because I have, I have three. Three is a collection. Two is a wannabe collection, a poser. It's a poser collection. Three is a collection. So now I have four. I love these glass floaters. Okay, now, if you don't know, originally, when the fishermen would throw out nets that they, you know, kind of like a trot line, the way it hangs down straight and you want to catch fish in the net itself, you know, not scooping them up, but they swim into it and get, and get caught. You need something to, to keep the line up. Well, you know, they didn't have styrofoam back then to hold it up. So they would get these hand-blown glass spheres, which would float because there's air in them. 
and then they would weave the fishing nets around them and tie them to the nets and these would be spread out on the nets and that's what hold the nets up. So you can find these both um, new ones, you know, recreations, reproductions, that's it. And you can find older ones as well. This one is, I think, an older one because if you will look and see how ragged that pontal is, you know, this one was not designed for beauty. But it is beauty. It is beautiful. You can get them in all different colors, all different sizes. They look lovely in many different styles of, um, of home decoration in many different rooms in your home. So look into them if you think you might like them. Look online. Go to house, H-O-U-Z-Z-E, -Z -Z -E, I think, dot com, and you will find whatever style you want to see there. So anyway, I got that. Putting that with my other ones. And then, oh, darn, I need to get these inside. We bought records. We bought records. Let's see, I got a, a Black Oak, Arkansas that I didn't have. These are 1970s Arkansas boys. And who be this? All right, who is this? That'd be something my husband bought. Who the heck is this? Oh, <laughs> I dropped my records. Oh my lord, who is this? Oh, I wouldn't want to be like you. Okay, I know that song, but who the hell is that? I, Robot, I wouldn't want to be like you. What in the world? Okay, you're screaming at me. You're screaming at me. You know exactly who it is. Who sings this? Uh, it's 1976. Alan Parsons, thank you. <laughs> Finally figured it out. You know, Alan Parsons project. <sighs> you know, I hold on. I, I gotta grab these. There are songs that, and records and stuff. You know, but you like. I can't remember who sings that. Especially when you start getting old. Here we go. The legendary Leonard Skinner. Okay. Man, this is old album jacket but we have a few Leonard Skinner so and my husband came up and he goes I got you a present to surprise and I'm like what is it he goes I bought you a sticks album I have all the sticks albums <laughs> now if they made anything after say Paradise Theater the one with Mr. Roboto, then I don't have it. But I have the classic sticks. So, but I thought it was sweet of him to think of me and buy it and sneak it. Hold on, I gotta pick up my Black Oak, Arkansas. Black Oak, Arkansas. They were some raunchy southern rock, man. And I don't mean raunchy like they're dirty, just that if you, if you, Jim Mangum, I think his name is. If you hear him sing, you'll understand what, I, what I'm talking about when I say raunchy. He's just got this gravelly voice. So, okay. Oop, there's something in a paper sack, and I don't know what it is. What is in here? Oh, paper dolls! My paper dolls! I love vintage paper dolls from the 30s, 40s, 50s that my mother, well, my mother would have had the ones in the 30s and 40s. She got married just after World War II, so would have phased out by then. But she had like the original Gone with the Wind paper dolls and Betty Grable and uh, Deanna Durbin, I think it was. And I loved playing with them when I was little, so. But they're so expensive. So I buy the reproduction ones, quality reproduction ones. I plan to be an old lady in a nursing home playing with my paper dolls because they store, you know, in a small area. And uh, so I'm just gonna be like, don't bother me. I'm playing with my paper dolls. Anyway, but these, 
I don't know. I can't remember. Were these reproductions? They may have been because I know what I, I pay for my reproductions and it was equivalent to the reproductions without having to um, pay for the shipping. Let me get them out and I can tell you. No, these are not going to be, no, these are not reproductions. These are the actual paper dolls. And you can tell by the type of paper that was used. And these paper dolls, generally, they were a lot taller than the paper dolls of uh, the modern era, the contemporary ones, even of the ones that I played with in the 60s and 70s. I always, I, it would always frustrate me that I couldn't mix my paper dolls with my mom's paper dolls because they're, they, they look like Amazons, you know? But they had the best clothes. They had the most beautiful clothes. And these belong, because they've got their name on the back, to Margie and Millie. So, now, maybe their names were Margie and Millie, but I thought it was Diana Lynn. No, they're Diana Lynn. Now, did Diana Lynn portray a Margie and Millie? I don't know. Some of the clothes are cut out, and they've had their names written on the back, so you know who they are. Although, generally, you knew because of the poses, the the they wouldn't fit anyone but them. Let's see here. Oh, here's another one. See? And this was a Maggie. Margie, Millie, and Maggie. Now, here's some clothes that have not been cut out. I want to move them aside so I can show you these other ones. Now, here's something, and it was endearing to my heart because my mother did this when she was young, and she taught me how to do it, so I did it. And she would often do it for me as well. And it's using the dolls as a shape pattern and making them clothes of your own that you have designed. So whoever owned these, as you can see, they made some of their own. Oh my gosh, I'm getting a phone call from Poland. I don't, I don't even know Poland. <laughs> so anyway, this really in, endeared it to my heart. Look at this wild one. That really made it personal for me because we did the same thing. My mother had plans to become a fashion designer. Instead, she met and married my dad. In fact, she was already registered for college and my grandparents didn't get their deposit back. They weren't very pleased about that. So, you know, I could have been the daughter of a famous fashion designer because my mother could sew anything and she designed the most beautiful clothes. Like, if you've ever seen Gone with the Wind, you know the, the scarlet red dress that she wears to Ashley's party, the, the uh, shame dress. Okay. Somehow that had gotten lost or torn up or something. So my mother drew and colored that dress and it looked exactly like that dress. So she recreated it for her, her, her Scarlet doll. But look at these clothes. Oh, aren't they beautiful? Let's see if there's an evening gown in here. Is there an evening gown we can look at? Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, okay. Look. Look at that red dress and that blue one. I mean, now you tell me, wh why don't we dress in these beautiful clothes? And why in the world would I not want to play with paper dolls? I mean, there is absolutely no reason in the world why I should not just want to play with paper dolls. So, I got these. Sometimes I have, I have several of the recreation, reproduction, reproduction paper dolls. Sometime I'll, I'll make a video of that for you and show them all to you. And that way if anyone's interested, you know, they can see them and if, if not, I'll just, I mean, see, I'm, I am a, you, it's a wonder, why does my room look like this when I try to put everything up all at once? I don't know. So here's another one that I got. 
they call it an extra large paper doll because they're not used to the fact that the dolls are you know thicker I mean larger and they're not on the same you know big thick paper either so she was by herself and just had a few outfits but you know I, I, it, I was not upset over not having a bunch of clothes because as I said my mother taught me how to design my own outfits so all I have to do is you make an outline of the doll okay in case you want to do it you trace her so that you know where to make the tabs on the clothing and then you either just let your imagination go wild or you can look at old movies or old photographs or clothing patterns and copy them you can use crayons you can use colored pencils whatever you want now this when you say extra large doll this is more of an extra large doll she is can you see the difference see their feet are about in the same spot see how much taller she is her head's bigger this i know her i know her she is a Hollywood star. She is a Hollywood star from the 1940s. I can't remember who she is. I may already have some dolls of her. Or I may have just seen her movies and stuff. My mother had this doll. And I know this because this outfit in green that you can see right here, I remember it. And that's how I have found, because I'm trying to find all the ones that my mother had that I played with when I was little. And that's one of the ways I found them, either by remembering exactly what the paper doll girl looked like or remembering uh, certain outfits. And so I would go through and find the outfits. And that's how I uh, have been buying them. And then, of course, I, I'm trying to buy the ones that I had, the... Uh, the bride, the PJs, um, you know, PJ from Barbie, um, that girl, Snow White, not Snow White, um, Sleeping Beauty, things like that I'm working on. I get a 101 Dalmatians book. I don't know why. I don't remember, but I got it. Oh, and then this, these people, okay. I love die cuts haven't had the opportunity to put them up in this new house yet but I have a large package of die cuts and I as I recall they're mostly Christmas but they are the vintage die cuts the big vintage die cuts are so expensive especially Halloween so we found it was Christy and I we found a dealer at Round Top who carries reproductions of originals they're not just new ones they are the actual reproductions of original Halloween die cuts so I got a few packages of those and you may remember and say one side is shinier than the other so you may remember seeing these die cuts from your childhood look at this this owl in a pirate suit. He's even got a peg leg. <laughs> and then the black cat as a three musketeer. And then, ah, uh, Boney Maroney, as my grandson calls him. Boney Maroney as the pirate. But he is also, so he's going to get his shovel. He's going to go bury his treasure. Yo ho ho, and a bottle of rum. 16 men on a dead man's chest. And one more package of them. See, and I hadn't even opened these up. Which I don't mind doing. If they were original ones in a packaging, you can believe I would not be opening them up. 
Yeah, maybe I would. It would depend. Depend on what I was going to do with them. Okay, here you go. Ah, this one is, oh, what a mess. What a mess. What a mess. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Ah, oh. This is like a two-person job, people. I forgot what this was, so when I came out, I took it out of the package, it just went everywhere. It's like a banner to hang up with all these fabulous characters on it. Look at this. Oh, I am so gonna use this come Halloween this year. It is huge. And the connectors, instead of those you know the brads that would pop out they're riveted and it is six and a half feet a jointed streamer so that's cool let's see okay anything else non-fabric in this tote yes there's a couple things let's see what i get here oh greatest mysteries three hours on compact disc now i am a um, golden era of radio enthusiast. You know, before television, everybody listened to radio and all the radio um, programs. And several of them translated into a television when that medium began, such as Dragnet and Gunsmoke. Um, even Richard Diamond had um, a, a TV program. But most of these um, that did, tra of those that translated that I know of personally, well, you know, Lucy had her original show on radio that turned into I Love Lucy on television. It was called, um, oh, what was her name? Lucy and, oh gosh, they were a, they were a newlywed married couple and he was a, a lawyer and but it was the same format minus having Ethel she got into all kinds of hijinks you know Lucy um, Dragnet kept the same guy with Jack Webb but Gunsmoke quit having um, Jim uh, what's his name the guy who ended up playing Cannon on TV it, they used James Arness instead um, let's see what else the Richard Diamond show they used somebody else car 54 I believe started as a radio program even into the 70s and 80s they still had the CBS radio mystery theater where they would do radio mystery shows every night every night um, there was the Campbell's Playhouse Orson Welles had had that one there was even they even had was it MGM or I can't remember one of the big studios had a radio show and what they would do was they would come and do the radio version of big movies that they had out at the time and usually they tried to get the same actors Jimmy Stewart you know Humphrey Bogart oh Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall had a great program um, but they would try to get the same actors if they were available to come and do the movie on the radio. So, I am a huge radio, golden radio buff, so I bought that. And then, a bag of sugared fruit. Now, I don't remember if these are the ones that I got from Beth. Or if these were some more that I found. Because these are small and I think the ones I got from Beth made them a bigger one. But these are really, really sweet. I love sugared fruit. I love sugared fruit. Okay, let me see. And there could be something wrapped up in this material that is breakable. But I don't, I don't feel anything. Okay, so now we're to fabric. Luckily, there's not tons in here. This is more of an upholstery type fabric. But I loved the colors. So I, I got it, and it does have a cutout on it. I don't know what they made for it, but look at these pinks and greens with the yellow tied in. Oh my God. It reminds me of Fruit Life Savers. I don't know why. Fruit Life Savers. 
but you know the, the pink and green used to be a huge back in the um, the late 60s early 70s pink and green was a huge color combination that people would do in their living rooms in their bedrooms bathrooms everywhere and then I got a large piece of just black broadcloth cotton that I can use as fillers and um, borders and strips and stripes in quilts and other things. Oh, and then I found this. Ooh, this is a print. Oh my gosh. Sort of a, it's, a, it's an Aztec Coco Pelli kind of vibe going on on this material on a black background. Very vibrant colors. Very vibrant colors. That's beautiful. See, I like I like getting fabric. I like folding fabric. I even like ironing fabric. I like fabric. Then I got this sparkly Christmassy print in a plaid of red and green with the uh, Lorex thread stripes in it to give it that sparkle. We have another piece of embroidery type material. Um, to me, it has a south of the border feel, a, you know, a ball fringe edging kind of thing in great colors as well. This, this, uh, I, I believe this is some more sari material because of the print and the extreme length of it, but it, it's a width panel and it just goes and repeats all the way this down this length, but there's, it's hard to describe. It looks like sorry material, just, let's just put it that way. And it's got a Hindu, you know, Middle Eastern type of of looking print to it in browns and golds with some reds and greens and there are is so much of it but and like that other that I got and told you about this one also says made in Japan just like that other sorry material did and in, to make sure you know I'm not saying sorry like that is so sorry s-o-r-r-y I'm saying sorry like um is it s-a-r I, S A R E E. I don't. I can't. I don't know. But sorry, I can't spell sorry. <laughs> then I got some soft flannel, and it is a little bit of Superman fabric for the Superman fans out there. Not intended for children's sleepwear. And we're not even going to discuss why they started adding that. Then I got this lovely jersey knit. Oh, it's so cool on my skin. Look at this pattern. Look at that. Ooh, isn't that gorgeous? Oh, that's bright. I'd make a beautiful shirt for myself out of this if I had a serger. <laughs> Look at that. Look how nicely that would drape. Get over my shoulder. Jersey, it makes the most wonderful material for blouses, especially if you want to have any type of draping going on. They used to make a lot of evening gowns um, in the early 70s out of this type of jersey material because it, it flowed and had such movement and you could make all these wonderful drapes and swoops and sleeves that were just fabulous, okay? Generally, you had to have a really good figure, but you know, in the 70s, it was very popular to be very thin. You know, very, very thin and sunshine healthy. But of course, you know, you weren't healthy trying to be that thin, so. But see, look, it's like I've got this beautiful shirt on. It's fabulous. So anyway, look, I emptied a tote. Now all I have to do is put this stuff away somewhere. I'm so excited. So thank you for sticking around for the material if you did. I hope you enjoyed material as much as I do. 
and we will get together for another round top tub haul in the very near future. See us something. If you see anything that you thought you might be interested in, even though most of it was for me, I might be persuaded to part with it. You can contact me at a vintage conversation on gmail.com. And you can also find me on Instagram where I post pictures of things that I find and do and we have a good time. So thank you for watching. Please stop by again soon.